Are we on the verge of a collapse in the housing market? Has the real estate bubble finally burst in Canada? And what is going to happen next in the market? In this video, I'll answer these three questions and much more. Stick around until the end of the video where I'll share a hack that will allow you to analyze whether the housing market will be rising or falling. Hey, what's up? Darren Voros here. My mission is to help you reduce your real estate investing education time from months to minutes. Subscribe not to miss what's coming. In order to understand if the real estate market will collapse and values will fall, we have to understand what drives real estate prices. Just because there's an article online that says the real estate market is about to crash doesn't mean that it will actually happen. I'm not saying this is fake news. I'm just saying that headlines are meant to grab attention. But if you read the actual article, there's usually a slightly different story. The real estate market is driven by multiple factors, but let's focus on five. These five are the major reasons that real estate either goes up or goes down. Let's start with what has the least impact on the real estate market and we'll work our way to the factor that will have the most impact. Number five, affordability. There is something called the affordability index, which tells you how much of your household income is being dedicated to your living expenses. Ideally, this number is under 30%. Let's look at a couple cities across Canada to see how they compare. Let's start with the center of the universe, Toronto. That joke was for all of my fellow Albertans and pretty much everyone else in Canada. In Toronto, according to the National Bank, 72% of your paycheck is going towards your monthly mortgage payment. In Montreal, 38% of your paycheck is going towards your monthly mortgage payment. In Edmonton, about 25%. In Winnipeg, 24%. Quebec City, 24%. Ottawa, 38%. Victoria, 76%. And the granddaddy of them all, Vancouver, where 92% of your income will go towards your monthly mortgage payment. So how is it that someone can afford to live in Vancouver and why do house prices continue to go up? For that answer, we need to look at some of the other factors here, but affordability will have an impact on pricing. Number four is interest rates. For the past few years, interest rates have been at record lows. The Bank of Canada continued to drop the prime lending rate to stimulate the economy. And when people can borrow money very inexpensively, they will continue to buy things, including real estate. So with that logic in mind, it would make sense that if interest rates start to go up, real estate values start to go down which is partly true and something you're seeing right now, but this is usually temporary. Rising interest rates will worry people and make them second guess whether they wanna buy a house or whether they should wait until interest rates stabilize or start to go down again. But that doesn't mean when interest rates are going up, prices are falling. If you look at where interest rates have historically been and how the real estate market has performed, there isn't really a direct correlation. My parents bought my childhood home in 1976. At the time, interest rates were 18%. But in 1976, the housing market wasn't crashing because interest rates were at 18%. A few years ago, interest rates were at close to 6% and the real estate market was increasing at a record rate. So rising interest rates do not necessarily have a long-term effect on real estate values. Having said that, when interest rates do start to rise and people are stretched to their limit with their living expenses, this can force additional people to sell their properties or in some cases, people will default on their loans, which has an effect on the real estate market. But most Canadians do not default on their loans, especially in relation to our friends south of the border, which leads to my next point. The number three item that drives real estate pricing is skin in the game. When the housing market collapsed in the United States in 2008, 2009, a lot of people walked away from their homes. Why did they do that in the US versus here in Canada? Don't get me wrong, real estate values fell here as well, but not at the same rate they did in the US. The reason that the US housing market crashed was because the banks in the US were basically giving out mortgages with zero money down. If you can get a mortgage and you don't have to put a down payment down on your property and over time, this property is worth less than what you paid for it, why would you continue to make that mortgage payment? You would probably just hand the keys to the bank and go find another place to live that's less expensive. Sure, it will ruin your credit for a few years, but many people are and were willing to take that risk. Here in Canada, it's a little different. For rental properties, the minimum down payment is 20%. If the average sale price in Canada is close to $800, thousand dollars that would mean that if you default on your loan to the bank you're walking away from hundred sixty thousand dollars of your money most people are not willing to do that so having some skin in the game with a down payment will force people to figure out a way to make that mortgage payment so that they don't lose their home 
This is a large factor in why the real estate market is a little more stable in Canada. The number two item that drives real estate prices is jobs. If there are jobs available and people are making money, they will buy real estate. So when you look at which areas of the country have good jobs and stable jobs, you'll see their real estate market is more insulated against fluctuation. Let's take a city like Fort McMurray, Alberta, for instance. Real estate values there were off the charts for a few years when oil was booming, but then oil drops and all of these companies lay off their employees. The housing market dropped at that point because with one industry supporting the majority of the residents, if that industry goes away, so do the people and so do their income to support that location. So a market with multiple industries and a diverse job market in conjunction with high paying jobs will always have a more stable real estate market. Now, before we get to number one, I've got some exciting news. My new and improved real estate investing masterclass has just gone live. This is the most comprehensive real estate investing training on the market today. Whether you're just getting started as a real estate investor or you've got an existing portfolio of properties and you're looking to take things to the next level, this masterclass is for you. There are over 30 modules covering everything from how to buy an apartment building to flipping a property for profits. You'll also get access to my team of professionals, various spreadsheets and analyzers I use in my business, and the best part, you also get three months of live group coaching with me for additional support. Check it out at darrenvoros.com. Use the promo code YouTube for $200 off. All right, the number one factor when it comes to what drives real estate prices is supply and demand. When real estate supply is low, meaning there are not a lot of properties on the market and demand is high, prices will continue to rise. When real estate supply is high and demand is low, real estate values will drop. So all of the other factors here are really driving supply and demand. So what drives demand? Things like immigration will lead the way here. This isn't limited to foreign immigration. This can also be inside of our own country. People moving from province to province because of opportunity. Supply, on the other hand, is driven by housing starts, or in other words, how many holes in the ground we're digging on a regular basis. If there are more people moving to an area than there are new housing units being created, then this will drive supply down and demand up, which will keep real estate values inflated. And right now in some provinces, we are in a housing crisis, which means that supply is not keeping up with demand. My prediction is that we will see a softening of the real estate market, but we won't see a crash. What does a crash even mean for some people? When demand is down and supply is up, which is happening right now, you can't just look at these factors. You have to look at if the values of real estate are changing at all. And for the most part, they are, but they're not changing that significantly. And also you have to consider that property values have been increasing at an unsustainable rate. And at the peak of the market, properties are probably overvalued. So when you consider these things, even a drop in real estate values from the peak is probably bringing things more in line with where they should be. Here's my advice to you. If you're interested in buying property and you've been waiting for something to happen, this is the time. It's definitely shifted to more of a buyer's market where you can put conditions on your offers and you're not in a bidding war with 20 other people. Are you gonna get a property for 50% off? No, but you have a little more time to make a decision and you may not be in competition with anyone else. And as long as our politicians continue to choke the supply of housing by over-regulating the housing starts, the market isn't going anywhere anytime soon. As promised, I wanted to share a hack with you that will allow you to analyze whether the housing market will crash or not. In your local municipality, because real estate is very local, look up the average months of inventory with your local real estate board. This metric tells us how long it would take to completely liquidate current inventories at the current rate of sales activity. If the months of inventory is below four, then you are in a seller's market. This means prices will most likely be going up. If you see months of inventory above four, this is a buyer's market, which means that housing prices are probably leveling off or in some cases falling. So use this indicator to see what's happening in your local real estate market. Now I'd love to hear from you. What's your prediction for the housing market? Do you think it's going to go up or is it going to go down? And if you think it's going to go down, by how much do you think it will fall? Leave that in the comment section below. If you have any real estate investing questions, you can also leave those there for me as well. If you're not already doing so, you can follow me on Facebook and Instagram where I post regularly. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on Tuesday.